Not long ago, Nintendo released the Super Mario 3D All-Stars Collection, featuring several of the most celebrated 3D platformers of all time. These are iconic games that redefined our expectations for the genre, and their impact continues to be felt to this day. Now, if you're looking for a 3D platformer that's the complete opposite of those groundbreaking games, then look no further than the awful Tamarin. Coming to us from the people who made SNK All-Stars for mobile devices, this is one of the worst and most incompetent platformers you'll ever play. And that's before you get to the atrocious third-person shooting. Yeah, we need to talk about Tamarin. This has been an exceptionally bad year for the adorable little monkey at the center of Tamarin. While COVID hasn't had a chance to spread to the forest, pollution and destruction has. In fact, things have gotten so bad that his home has burned down and been reduced to rubble. And with all his woodland friends in danger and oppressive insects taken over, our tiny hero decides to fight back and save the forest. While not wholly original, this is a solid enough setup for a cutesy 3D platformer. And that's what it is, at least for a while. We run and jump through colorful levels, saving birds and collecting fireflies, which will in turn open up new parts of the interconnected world and reveal additional powers and abilities. But just as you get used to rolling around and climbing up walls, the game switches gears entirely by adding handguns and Uzis to the mix. That's right, Tamarin is occasionally a third-person shooter. You'll go from gleefully hopping through the lush forest to filling your enemies full of lead by gunning everybody down. If that seems like an odd mix, then it's worth mentioning that Tamarin was developed by a team comprised of former Rare employees. You can see it in a lot of the design decisions in both good and bad ways. The game whips wildly from a Banjo-Kazooie style platformer to a Jet Force Gemini inspired shooter, with both halves coming up way short. We should probably start with the more violent half, because it's the third-person shooting that ultimately tanks this game. My first instinct is to call it outdated, but that's not fair, because the awful gameplay would have felt equally archaic 20 years ago. Aiming the gun is floaty and never stops moving, which makes it feel like you're playing with a broken controller. There was never a point where I felt in control of where I was shooting, even in the rare times where the game actually locked on to the opponent. The aiming has a mind of its own, which leads to a lot of firefights where it's probably just best to keep shooting and hope that a few of the bullets connect. It doesn't help that you can't adjust the controls at all. You can't even invert the aim. It's so bad that you'll actively dread going into these action levels, because they're always way more frustrating than fun. But don't let the awfulness of the third-person shooting fool you into thinking that the 3D platforming is actually good, because it also comes with a lot of problems. For one thing, our little monkey hero is a nightmare to control. He slips and slides all over the level, constantly falling off of ledges and smacking into enemies. He has limited moves, and nothing that distinguishes him from every other adorable mascot character that you've forgotten about over the last 25 years. The little monkey has no personality, and is neither funny nor interesting. He's just out there looking for fireflies and trying to figure out where to go, all while fighting the unruly camera every single step of the way. Now, believe it or not, the whole trying to figure out where to go thing accounts for a lot of my frustration. The game wants you to freely explore the interconnected world and find new adventures. But that's a whole lot riskier than it sounds. If you take the wrong turn, you're going to find yourself playing through the previous stage all over again. That means fighting the same enemies, solving the same puzzles, getting stuck in the same shoot 'em up sections, and even taking on the same boss. And because so much of the game looks the same, there's a real chance that you'll accidentally replay a completed stage multiple times for no reason at all. That's an additional 20 minutes of your time wasted, all because you mistakenly took the wrong exit. But look, even if you're able to avoid the accidental backtracking, 
It's not like the stuff you're doing in the story is all that compelling. A lot of the game comes down to taking on platforming challenges in order to locate fireflies. These are usually timed events that have you racing through the level in a mad dash trying to collect a special item. The problem is that some of these challenges go on for an unreasonable amount of time. A good example of this is a coin dash found deep within the mountains. It has you running and climbing in order to collect all the coins before time runs out. But don't think that it's over once you've done that, because the game will want you to immediately collect another batch of coins, and then another, and another, and another! And hey, guess what? If you don't complete the six legs of that challenge in time, then it's back to the very start, where you'll have to do the whole thing all over again, every single leg of it. This is cruel, even by 3D platformer standards. The truth is, I could go on for hours complaining about Tamarin, because every single part of this game is flawed. The 3D world is uninteresting, the platforming is outdated, the camera is unruly, the enemies are lame, the frame rate is inconsistent, the third person shooting is a mess, and there's never any reason to get invested in the story. The most impressive thing about this game is that it somehow manages to get every single thing wrong. Even the stuff that 3D platformers have been getting right for decades. <sighs> Look, I get it. This is a negative review. This game gets a lot wrong, so it's only fair to spend most of the time complaining. But hang on, I don't want to leave you with the impression that Tamarin is all bad because there is one thing that I actually genuinely like about this misguided platformer. For all of its faults, I have to admit that I like the look of the game. The graphics are sharp and the world looks surprisingly realistic. The main hero may lack a personality, but at least he's cute and fuzzy. When I first saw him pop up on the screen, I figured it would be impossible to make me dislike such an adorable little face. Boy, was I wrong. Tamarin is not just a crummy 3D platformer, but also one of the worst third-person shooters you're ever going to play. It may have been developed by industry veterans, but this unfocused mess of a game is amateur hour through and through. Aside from the surprisingly strong visuals, every single element of Tamarin is fundamentally flawed. From the frustrating difficulty to the bad gameplay to the uninspired levels, there's little here to recommend. Look, you're better off playing any other 3D platformer released in the last two decades. It doesn't even matter what you pick, because it's guaranteed to be better than Tamarin. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What is the worst platformer you've ever played? For bonus points, what's the worst third-person shooter you've ever played? Ooh, I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below, in both cases. In other news, we'll be back next week with a new episode of Game Over on Monday, a review of Bartlow's Dread Machine on Tuesday, and I'm so excited to announce this a brand new series on Wednesday. Oh, and don't forget Defunct Games news on Sunday. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.